If past Metal Games can be likened to movies, then Metal Gear Solid 5's The Phantom Pen can be likened to a season-long television series. It took me almost 200 hours to 100% complete this game. Now, that is a long time, not just by Metal Gear standard, but by video game standard in general. Now that I'm 200 hour wiser, I have more insight into the game and I want to discuss about what is good and what is bad of an open world Metal Gear game. A typical link Metal Gear story in such a game is not good enough. Metal Gear Solid is a series renowned for its storytelling prowess, mixing emotional stories and comedies with well thought out, fully three dimensional characters. Touching on philosophies, political issues, as well as anti nukes message all the while fighting monstrous sized robots. However, if you play the previous entries of the series, you will notice that the story is all very brief. In Metal Gear Solid, the story is resolved in one night. In Metal Gear Solid 2, the tanker incidents ended in an hour maximum, while the plant incident is resolved within a day. You see where I'm going with this? Metal Gear Solid is good because it is short. It's short so that we only experience the exciting part of the infiltration process. I'm sure there are a lot of things done behind the scenes that we didn't get to see, such as Otakon hacking away at the Pentagon website for intel about the new Metal Gear Ray, or a group of scientists developing the submarine used to send solid snake into shadow Moses. But in this game, you get to see the preparation process. For example, you are required to steal an enemy worker gear so that they will be forced to order a new batch of worker gear. And from that, you can monitor their call to their HQ. You are required to save a Mujahideen fighter and recover the honeybee weapon just to stumble upon Skull Face. You need to listen to the conversation between the three commanding officers in Afghanistan in order to learn that they are now countering your play tactics with new equipment. What this basically boils down to is that they are taking a 12 hour story, dissecting it and stretching it out to make it feel like a 120 hours experience. This is, in my opinion, simply not how storytelling should be done in an open world game. Why not put more focus on each character and have each of them carry their own support? Time and again, Rockstar Games have proved that this is a good way to set up missions. So, why not learn from them? They are, after all, one of the best developers out there when it comes to making open world games. Missions with hidden tasks. Good. It has to be acknowledged that of the 31 main missions, quite a lot of them are just small missions meant as a setup for bigger and more important missions. However, I still absolutely love the way missions are designed in this game. Essentially, each mission needs to be played at least 3 times in order for you to see everything it has to offer. The first time, you can just enjoy it, explore your options and do whatever you want. After the first playthrough, a list of mission tasks will be revealed. In your second playthrough, try to complete those mission tasks. Whether it is if dropping on the target's conversation or a stolen prisoner, just try it and you will get to explore a completely different side of the mission. After you have fully completed all the mission tasks, on your third playthrough, you can try to speed through the mission to get the S-Rank. Your playstyle will also have an effect on the enemy's tactic. If you always shoot them, your enemy will start wearing helmets, body armor, and riot suits. They will even be equipped with more powerful weapons like shotguns, machine guns that could kill you in a few hits. If you use too much sleeping gas, the enemy will start using gas masks. And if you always infiltrate at night, the enemy will start using more flashlight and night vision goggles. With this system in place, replaying your mission will force you to change your tactic. Because the enemy are more dangerous now. You can't track the same guards in the same place twice because he now wears a shield on his back. But you are not completely helpless either. The beauty of this system lies in the fact that you can also counter the tactics by sending dispatch units to destroy the supply of equipment. Now, this is a great example of a difficulty curve that is logical, which makes it a rare gem among today's video game. It doesn't give you less help or the enemies more help just for the sake of cranking up the difficulties. The mission becomes more difficult because the enemies are now better equipped and you are trying to achieve more tasks. This gameplay mechanics makes the system fair and it encourages the players to experiment with different play style and the game is better because of it. Replaying all missions on harder difficulty, really good. I know this will ruffle a lot of feather among the Metal Gear community because many of them think Chapter 2 of the Phantom Pen proves that the game is rushed out before it is finished. Well, Games Radar did a very compelling argument against this. I put the link in the information box, go check it out. Anyhow, it is true that only a few missions in Chapter 2 are new missions, while the rest are all missions on harder difficulties. However, because of how well the missions are designed and how fluid the gameplay felt, 
Playing in a higher difficulty is never frustrating. When I encounter a game over, it never felt like the game is being unfair. It's just that I'm not skilled enough, and that gives me motivation to develop better equipment and play more carefully the next time, which makes me a better player. Of course, it also forces you to be really creative. For example, in the mission where you have to steal a PF truck guarded by four scout soldiers, did you know that you can just climb into the Nova Braga airport through the back, extract the truck away with a Wombo filter device and ride off the hot zone with the B horse? This is mind blowing for me because in my first attempt of the mission, I spent hours trying to defeat the scout soldiers. Yet with this tactic, I can finish the mission under 5 minutes. Finally, this mission also shows that in Phantom Pen, the enemy works on a schedule independent of your action. They don't wait for the player to walk into an invisible line to trigger an event. Right after you start the mission, no matter what you choose to do, the escorting armored vehicle will arrive at Noah Braga Airport. The truck driver stationed there will get on the truck and they will leave for the Riverside Port through Kishima Camp. And this has opened up all kinds of gameplay possibility and parallel even by the legendary Metal Gear Solid 3. Boring side ops, bad. What a wasted opportunity here. Side ops is a grind to get through in the Phantom Clan. It is repetitive, generic, and doesn't really add anything new to the game. I did the math. Of the 157 side ops missions, 111 of them play almost exactly like this. That's basically how 70% of the side ops missions are gonna play. At this point, I just want to ask what has gone wrong here? Peace Walker has a really diverse range of side ops missions. So, why would the same team, now with more experience and more budget, make a worse side ops? Think of the interesting things that could be done in this huge world. In Afghanistan, you can help the Taliban destroy Soviet supply truck, kidnap Soviet officer, or help them defect to the West. Maybe even take scandalous picture of high ranking personnel and blackmail them for information. In your leisure time, maybe take part in horse racing or Afghan polo, you know, like in Rainbow 3. In Central Africa, since it's technically not a war zone, you should be able to meet civilians and accept quests from them. Maybe even meet an African warlord like Jonas Sawinbi, that would be cool, right? But no, you do the same thing over and over again with minimal variation. Where's the fun in that? Rescuing Wildlife Why? This game also has some animal rescue mission where you will have to place capture cage near LZ all over the map. On paper, hunting wildlife seems like a good idea for this game, but the execution of it is simply not good enough. First of all, nobody tell you what to do. Unlike plants, there are no icons for animals on the map, so it is basically impossible to do it without referring to online guides. What's worse, a lot of the animals are captured automatically using a cage, and you won't even get to see the animals you spot. In the end, the whole thing just feels tacked on and half-baked. If it wasn't a requirement to get 100% completion, I doubt few players would even try it. Managing the mother base Good. In the hand of a lesser developer, managing the mother base might become a chore. Thankfully, in the hands of Kojima Productions, this is surprisingly fun, addicting even if I may say so myself. It encourages you to use non lethal weapon in the field in order to get as many high ranking soldiers as possible, which increase your heroism, and after each heroism circle is filled, it unlocks higher ranked soldiers in the field. As the mother base is quietly churning out weapons and items you want in the background, there is also a constant sense of progress in the game, much in the same ways as the mission. The mother base works on a time based mechanic independent of the player section. So, even if you are just sitting there in the ACC listening to tapes, the development process will still go on. And once in a while, the notification system will announce that development has complete for some item reassuring you that no time is being wasted while you are just sitting there listening to Miller's messy buttons. In conclusion, I guess there are no such thing as a perfect game, and as far as Metal Gear Solid 5 goes, it's not even the best Metal Gear Solid games in the series. There are flaws and plot holes here and there, but that doesn't mean it's not genuinely good. Far from it, this is technically one of the most polished Metal Gear games ever. As for the unfinished plot, Knowing Kojima's design philosophy, I think it is still too early to tell whether this is done intentionally to give you the phantom pain, or it is really the result of a rush job. Postscript, did you know that Zanzibar Land is actually Selino Yats in Matigay Solid 3?